So, welcome to another video. And this video was supposed to be about a CPU cooler, but I couldn't find the cooler, so that's not important. Instead, what I found was this. And this is actually Thermalrite CFX Thermal Paste. And if we believe the front of it, it has 14.3 watts per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity, which makes it better than Cryonaut. So Crownout's been considered the best thermal paste for a while now, and it's got 12.5 watts per meter Kelvin thermal conductivity. But because just testing two thermal pastes would be boring, I decided to test 10 more. So we have 12 total thermal pastes to test, and uh, at the end of the video I'm going to break it down by price point and by which one is the best performer. So we have 12 on the table, so let's check them out. So. Here are the pastes we're going to test. So like I said, we have the Thermorite TFX, and we have some Cryonaut here. And we also have a mix of some old favorites, and some ones that I've never actually seen before, or never used before. So we have some GC Extreme, some Arctic Silver 5, and some MX4. Then we have this here, which is actually Corsair's Thermal Paste. And I didn't actually know they made a thermal paste, but if we, unfortunately, if we look at the back, we can see it's only four degrees cooler than whatever basic thermal paste means. But we can get some reference because it says it's 3.8 watts per meter Kelvin. So this is probably just gonna be very similar to Entel's thermal paste, KPX, and I'm kind of excited to see how Noctua's paste does. I've never actually used Noctua's paste, so that's going to be kind of fun. And we also have some other ones. So these are ones I just grabbed on Amazon here. So this one is just labeled HYA9 Extreme Nano Grease. And this one is Nano Diamond Grease. And this isn't um, like the really expensive stuff from a few years ago. Uh, I think it was called like... Uh, Diamond Nano 24 karat or whatever. That's not this one. This is some knockoff copy. And it's just labeled with TKP3D, made in Taiwan. This one I've actually used, and uh, it's okay. Well, we'll see how it does against like the MX4 or the Arctic Silver 5. It's in about the same league, I think. So these are the thermal paste we're gonna toss. And if anybody can tell me what you, you're supposed to use with these things, so like, I guess they started adding these like a few years back, like, you know, this one has it, the, the GC Extreme has it, they're just like little scrapers, and I guess the idea is to flatten out the paste on the CPU, I'm not really sure why they're giving you this, because you just bolt down the cooler, and it gets rid of all the air bubbles, and evens out the thermal paste, so, someone please tell me what you do with these things, because I've just been throwing them away. So in order to run these tests, we need a hot CPU. So I'm going to be using a 9900K, 1.35 volts, 5.2 gigahertz, using a 360 millimeter open loop system. So it's a custom water cooling. And we're just going to run real bench for probably about 30 minutes. Uh, do it like twice. So let the CPU cool down, run it again, average the scores, and see what we get. Then, like I said before, we're going to break it down by price point and the top performer. So let's get to it. Here we have the results. So as you can see, uh, three of the top four thermal pastes on this list are all well-known name brand thermal pastes. You can also see um, the thermal conductivity rating from the manufacturer doesn't actually seem to mean really anything at all. As far as price point goes, of the ones I tested, the Nano Diamond Paste would be both the best performer and the cheapest. 
at about uh, $2.60 for a gram, which is pretty close to what you would need for one application. Um, of course, it's gonna vary. So if you do an Intel CPU or Threadripper, you're gonna need less paste or more paste. I have put a link to this thermal paste in the video description, but I couldn't find one on the US Amazon site. So I realize a lot of you are not gonna to wanna to get it. So the runner up in that case would be the GC Extreme. Now, as far as a slightly cheaper option, MX4 is always a good cheap option. Um, in this testing, it did nearly as well as any of the other pace. And it's, it's always cheap. It's like it's always on sale. So you can usually get it too for like four or five dollars. I've also included a link to that in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, do keep in mind that uh, MX4 tends to have a little shorter lifespan than some of these other pace, but you know this this happens to all thermal paste. It's that just the nature of thermal paste. It just degrades and gets worse. So you're gonna have to replace all of these eventually. So the cryonaut. So you probably saw it on the list and you're probably slightly confused. So let me clarify some things. So firstly, I got some cryonaut at the store and through doing these benchmarks, I noticed that, uh, well, this cryonaut, there's something wrong with it. Um, so that's number one on the list. So let me show you what happened there. So this is the cryonaut I actually got at the store. And it, you can see it's like a blue package. This is the normal cryonaut package here. And you can see that this isn't the regular one, right? Um, I didn't actually think much of this because this is how they're packaged where I'm at pretty much all the time. On all the stores you can get Cryonaut and uh, it's in these things. So this is either bad or old or I, I don't want to say fake because they're everywhere. It has a little Cryonaut sticker. Uh, so I don't know that it's fake, but this tube here is definitely not good. So then I went on Amazon and I got the black bag, the regular, everybody knows this bag. And uh, that's number two on the list. So the Cryonaut is still beats out this uh, Thermalrite TFX stuff. Um, but just make sure you get it in the black bag because apparently this one is not so good. So I did this just to see which paste was better or worse than any other pace or which one was a better value don't get too hung up on these numbers like if you like using cryonaut just use it if you like using mx4 just use it because honestly between mx4 and cryonaut is what something like six degrees if that three degrees maybe i'd have to look at the numbers but it, that even that that 10 degrees even is not going to matter too much on a stable system that you're running 24 7 now if you're benchmarking, obviously, you know, every little bit helps, but it doesn't matter. Just get a name brand known thermal paste that someone knows of. That's, that's really it. And you're going to be set. You're going to be fine. And quite honestly, if you're just gaming on a computer, chances are you're not using the CPU hundred percent or, you know, it's not generating as much heat as it could doing something else. So, you know, like a compute workloads, rendering workloads will probably generate more heat than a gaming workload, right? So your CPU is not going to get as hot. So just keep that in mind as well. Like you don't need the best thing ever to, to, to just run a CPU for games. You know, just because your CPU runs 10 degrees colder than somebody else's doesn't really mean anything. This is the end of the video and I, I hope it was helpful to you. Maybe you learned something. Uh, you know, just comment down below, what thermal paste do you like to use, which is your favorite, and maybe which ones you hate and have bad experiences or good experiences with. Just comment down below, tell me what you think about thermal paste you've used. Until next time, bye.